Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We are from the Rock Intercessor Ministries. We are to the preach to you the word of Jesus Christ, hoping that some of you give your life to God today. Amen. Now, today's message is the power of word. The awesome power of spoken word. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. For Peter says, For he who will love life and see goodness, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and he lives from speaking dissent. So today, my dear friends, I want to talk to you today on this subject of the power of word. The awesome power of the spoken word. It is so awesome. It is so powerful that Peter says in this way. If rightly use of the tongue is to life to you, my dear friend, and you will see good days. And so much have said today in the Bible about the use and about the abuse of the tongue. The two of the Ten Commandments deal with what use of the tongue. One, thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord called in vain. Two, thou shalt not be a full witness. Do you hear that, my dear friends? And many of other commandments here talk about what using of what, our tongue. For example, we ought to do what to give honor and glory to God with our tongue, and we should not have another God beside the Almighty God. So that means we ought to do what to praise Him with our tongue. The Bible also do what we honor our parents. What does that mean? Also, we praise our parents with our tongue, and therefore, God have His book. In the book of Proverbs, the Bible says this: There are six things that the Lord hates, and the seven that are abomination to Him. And out of this list of seven things that God has chosen, He said He will hate these two things. Have to deal with, deal with what we use today: our tongue for good use or for abuse. How, how much important our tongue is, my dear friend? Our tongue, put it in this way. It is the most dangerous animal known to man that live in the den behind the teeth. It is called the tongue. Now, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, put it in this way. He said the tongue has the power of life and death. So the power of the word of the word that we spoke here today. If he speak this word, he cannot do or give life, or he can take away life. That's what the Bible said. There's a power that is in your tongue, my dear friend power of life and death is in your tongue so our tongue can also do what build up others and the same tongue that you also use it can tear down others and now these days we hear about people speaking about in tongues and so many people today they say they speak in tongues and that is a sign of what spiritual some people think that's what the reason of spirituality is to do what to speak in other tongues but if a tongue that is not controlled my dear friend that is not really spirituality you see and I want you today to say, the use of your tongue is what determines what speciality that you have, my dear friend. So in this message, you're going to see here today the awesome power of word. And you're also going to see what the awesome power of spoken word. So first of all, today, letting stone, I want you to think about the power, the negativity of word, the power and the positive of the power. You see, because the Bible mentions the number of the signs of sin is what is in the tongue. For example, a sin of lying, that is in your tongue. A sin of lying is a sin that the Bible squarely do what? A fatalical forbid. The Bible said that shall not do what? Be a for witness. So we ought not to do what? To lie. Because when you lie, you using your tongue to lie. For example, the Proverbs chapter 6 said there are six things that the Lord hates. The seven that are abomination to him. Haughty eyes, that means proud look. Uh, watch this, it's a lying tongue. And then he said, The hands that shine us and blood. And then the Bible said, They had that device, what? Devices wicked plan. And for the feet that make us to do what? To do evil. And watch this, the Bible said, The false witness who breathe out lies. And one who so discord among brothers. So here is the Bible mentioned twice. In verse 6, he said, Lying. In verse 19, he said, Lying. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 16. So you see what Bible is saying here is this. The Bible speaks about the Pharisees, just quite speaking about the Pharisees who are liars during his day. Do you know what he said to them? He said to you, you are your father's the devil. 
and you want to do the desires of your fire of your father he was a murderer from the beginning and he does not stand in the truth and because there was no truth in him and whatever that he tells he tells lie whatever he speak he speak lie so that's the character of what devil devil is a liar and because he's a liar the father the jesus christ said that he's father of all liars that is the book of john chapter 8 verse 44 and just christ said to the devil that the devil was a liar and the devil is the father of all liars and therefore today my dear friend if you act in the same way that devil act that means you have your father and your stepfather my dear friend is the devil because the bible said the devil is a liar so perhaps for more or less today i want you to understand lying liberian all this have to do what do this with what the work of the devil so today we are living in a day age today where men war does not seem to mean anything anymore i'm talking about us today we don't keep our word anymore if you don't keep your word my dear friend that means you're a liar do you know that because you preach in this way when a man when we have priest treaty today in, in the society maybe between nations if they cannot keep that priest treaty that if they cannot keep it that means what well, they are lying no one at the bible say jesus christ became that priest treaty between man and god you see what about marriage here today do we keep our marriage vows anymore a couple will go to the altar and say that i do supposedly james said to jane we ought to do what to be roughly or wedded wife I take you as my wife in both in sick both in health both in poverty both in wealth i love you i honor you i cherish you the bible says, until death do them apart and so help me god that's what james said for some reason they end up what in the divorce court what is my message to you is this lying is something shouldn't be in our list my dear friends you see my message for you today is what the power of the word the awesome power of the spoken word and we are living in day today where a man's word means nothing anymore talking about business contract these days people don't keep their words so what does this mean that means we became what a lying society what about what about parents also lying to their children to make them feel good or supposedly maybe your telephone rang you can't tell your daughter maybe your son to go and say mom is not at home you are teaching them to do what to lie or maybe someone knock on the door you don't want to see them you tell your children to go there to say mama is not at home and when the child go there he will say mama says she's not at home and that's what you have become here we're teaching our children how to lie and my message for you today there's a power that is in the world you see there's an awesome power that is what is in the world so today how strange it is no wonder today that have generation of people today who don't live by that word, who don't keep that word. In fact, the word means nothing anymore to the society. And the Bible says, that shall not be a false witness. The abuse of the tongue. That shall not do what? Take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Or you say, Brother Kingsley, I just did that. It is not a big sin to be surprised. Let me tell you today, whatever that is in your heart, whatever that is in your mind, I want you today to know that God knows who you are, my dear friend. Amen. The Bible says we to do what? Never take the name of God in vain. Many of you today, you curse. What did you call God these days? He said, say, gosh. Is that what you are calling your God? I want you to stop using that word. The Bible says never use the name of God in vain. You see? Because you put it in this way. That little cause that you may say. Perhaps you ought to, to, to also do this. I do, I do little keep killing a few people. Or maybe say, I do little of uh, committing adultery. But the Bible said that the Ten Commandments still remains. And the Ten Commandments, inside the Ten Commandments, there are two things have to do with, uh, with you lying. Do not use your name of God, your Lord God, in vain. And the Bible also say what? Do not be a false witness. So listen to me, my dear friends. Do you know what the angels is doing right now in heaven? The Bible says, if you look into the book of Revelation, it said that the angels non-stop 24 7 they're saying holy 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 is the lord of the host but what the men do here today on the earth we are taking the name of god in vain or you say but i can't say i don't mean it i don't mean anything by it you see my dear friend that is the crime of faith that you could take a such a holy name of god and you will not mean anything to you 
and you say it don't mean anything by it and perhaps it's even worse than that means something that god is nothing to you the name of god is nothing to you anymore that we can use the name of god we can we can cut it short we can say gosh stop saying that my dear friend you are using the name of god what in vain and that's why god sent me here today to preach to you amen so we today we are living here today i want to show you two things when you use the name of god in vain number one it shows your wicked heart the bible says out of the out of the world out of the heart the man speaks you see so here you see you have a man who has a profound mouth it means that you have profound heart at the same time but not only that it shows your wicked heart it also shows what your empty head profanity is the attempt of one of fallible mind to express what one's self what falsely looks like that you see but you see here listen to me my dear friend the fallible mind it must be what the family mind because what does a man have that you have to do what to curse your god i mean if a man commits adultery he can say he get pressure from the from it if a man still he can say he gets something from me a position for me but what a person gets when you use holy god name in vain you get nothing but what judgment of god you see i mean you put it in this way it is like a fish biting a hook with no bait it doesn't even get the strength you see so you are the one expecting the judgment of almighty god and i also want to mention another abuse of thought that we used here today talking about criticism criticizing one another we should stop doing that amen the bible in fact the bible says instead of you gossiping you should do or you should share the gospel amen you see because when you gossip against one another it is a sin against holy god amen we ought to do the one never use the name of god in vain never use the name of man of god in vain hallelujah and that's my message for you today let it stone i want you today to understand the word of god is talking to you there's a power that is what in the world the awesome power of unspoken word so let me also let you know today about the awesome power of the work of god in positive sense amen just word i want to tell you today what have what ability to do the work to cut and to do or to harm to direct also to the world to run what a tremendous power that the world has spoken world have you see god created this universe with word you know that the bible said this in the book of Hebrews 11 3 that the world was framed by the word of god so that means god says something god said let that be light and it was light god said let that be this and there was this god said let that be that and there was that and god spoke and things began to be so the word you see right now came to be true by the outspoken word of god and not only that the bible says this not only that the, the, the world was created by the world the god that we are serving jesus christ also the world use the word to the world to sustain this word to uphold this word the bible said that they upheld everything by the word of his power so god created the world with the word and god controlled this world also with word let me let me let me give you an illustration just christ when he was here on this earth in the book of mark 11 verse 12 listen to what the bible says on the following day and when he came from bethany and he was hungry and seeing this nice effect tree in live he went there to see if he could find anything on it and when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season of eggs and listen to what just christ said and he said to it may no ever anyone eat from this fruit again and the bible said that his disciples had it so now what is it it's very interesting my dear friend i want you to understand this because he said look at just christ speaking to a tree which man speaks a tree jesus christ speaks a tree and the bible recorded it and to tell all the disciples had it so what happened here is this you find out the result in verse 20 because the bible says as they pass by in the morning that's the next day and they saw the fig tree was withered away to the root and peter remember and to say to him rabbi look the fig tree that you have caused have withered now i want you to understand this i want you to notice the application what just quite just make just quite now answer them have faith in god do you hear that have faith in god this is the book of mark 11 verse 22 the bible says you ought to do what to have faith in god so to have faith in god richard means you need to do what to have god kind of faith or or kind of faith that god has you see because god operates with words 
we ought to do what to do sent in as well to do what to operate by our words you see because words have power my dear friend so we ought to do what to have the kind of faith that god has now if you look into the verse 23 listen to what Jesus christ says truly i say to you whosoever said to this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not that in his heart but believe that what he says will come to pass and it will be done for him don't miss this i want you to understand it listen to it again he said if you believe what you say the bible said what that you believe when you speak it out it will come to pass it will be done to you it's even not get even more worse not only speaking about the tree yeah just quite speaking to the mountain who we'll speak to the mountain just why he said, whosoever said to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not that in his heart, but believes what he says, he will come to pass, and it will be done for him. Don't overlook this, my dear friend. Just why he spoke to the tree. And Jesus Christ also said to the mountain, as well, speak to the mountain. And he says that if you are going to do what, have the same faith, you have to do what? To say the same thing to the mountain and to the tree. You see? whosoever if you have faith like god has if you have faith god kind of faith you can go around today it's like me coming here speaking to this train and the waiter will by the way my pastor pastor peter do some deliverance back there in nigeria when he went to the witchcraft this big train he condemned me by through the word of god he said this tree waiter that's why people were using that tree to do what to do their shrine and he said that he spoke to that tree that tree waited literally in front of him i'm telling you today my message here today is what the awesome spoken word amen there's a power that is in your tongue my dear friend everybody i see right now walking around and those who are watching life right now i'm telling you they have a power and those gonna watch that i have a power and that power is what is behind the den we call it what tongue you see behind the den of your teeth we call it what tongue your tongue also what is in a what it plays so you ought to do what to be careful how you do or use your tongue and here is our lord jesus christ causing that tree you see so that means have a power to do what to place a curse on them on the tree that's the power that is in your tongue and my message for you today the power of word so you see just Christ controlled this world by his word and the world was framed by the word of god and jesus christ is acting like his own father because why his father controls everything through him by word this is very important that i want you to understand the power of our word do you get it my dear friend because we have been justified by the words and we have been condemned by the world we also use that is the power of word in the book of matthew chapter 12 verse 36 just why he said this i tell you on that day people will be give account to every careless word they speak every of your idle word that you speak my dear friend the bible says give account do you like to curse do you like to use f word do you like to use b word do you like to use gosh you have to use all these things the bible say on the last day you give account to god not to me brother kingsley you will do what give account to jesus christ so today i want you to know my dear friend every non productive word you see because what what just christ is taking here is this it's not saying that you have to always do or like preaching the gospel you can share job amen they can talk about sports if anything can refresh you if anything can relax you if that thing that is great if that thing is not careless if that is productive that's fine my dear friend amen but anyone that is not productive gossip anything that destroys anything that puts people down anything that hurts people anything that harms anybody anything that is unseemly anything that is not productive i'm talking about what careless word on that day jesus christ says every one of us will do what give account to him so there's a power of word are you listening you see because just christ said that every careless word people speak they shall give account on it on the last day on the day of judgment and then it goes on to say in verse 37 for the words for the words that you will be justified and by the words that you will be justified and by the word that you will be condemned so now it is no coincidence that I choose to their message the power of word. There are some power of spoken word, my dear friend. So the Bible says, by the word that you are going to be justified. You know what justify means? Just as you have not seen before. And then the same Bible says, by the same word that you use, you are going to do what be condemned. Condemned means going to hell. You see that? So we have to be very careful the way we use our word. 
He said, because in another passage as well, in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 8, verse 9, this is a very interesting one. Romans chapter 10 is very important for every believer. Amen. I want you to listen to it because here just Christ shows us how we are justified by what? Now verse 8, Romans chapter 10, verse 8. He said, but what does it say? The word is near you. Where is the word? The Bible said the word is in your mouth and in your heart. And that is the word of faith that we proclaim. And that's the word of faith I come to preach to you today. The Bible said the word is not far from you. That word is in your word, is in your heart, and it's in your mouth. Your two human being personalities that God given to you, my dear friend. Your heart is you receive the word. Your mouth you do what? Confess the word. Now watch this verse 9. He said, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God has risen from death, you will be saved. Can I help you, brother? I just wanted to say you're doing a really good work and just keep serving God as you are. Thank you, sir. God bless you, brother. Continue, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. So this is what God is saying here. In verse 9, he said, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God has risen from death, you will be saved. My friend, this is how you get saved. It's not about your works. It's not about praying five times a day. It's not about your fasting. It's not about your good looks. It's not about your any. It's not about religion. Jesus Christ said that if you believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him up from death and you confess it with your mouth, the Bible says you will be saved. And verse 10 it says, For the, with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is what? Saved. This is your salvation here today, my dear friend. You see, because salvation it is a gift, it's not by works, my dear friend. Amen. When you get saved, you still have to work, but you are not working to get your salvation, my dear friend. It is a gift of God. Amen. So with our words, we are being condemned. With our word, we have been justified. And this is the reason that we put so much emphasis when we preach. We want people to do what to do public confession. To confess that Jesus Christ is their Lord. You listen because. When you say amen, never means this. Listen to this, my dear friend. When you say amen to what God says, God say amen to what you said. Amen? Amen, oh. Hallelujah. Get it again, my dear friend. Never means this. When you say amen to what God says, and then God says amen to what you say. So when you believe in your heart enough, and you are convinced that Jesus Christ is Lord, with your heart, one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses, is saved. And the Bible says that word is near new. You can't say the word is not near you anymore. It says it's near you. Do you know where, how near it is? It's in your heart. And it's in your mouth. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. That's the word of faith that I come to preach to you today. If you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord in your heart, and you confess it in your mouth, you, my dear friend, the Bible says what? You will be saved. Because here is a man believing that Jesus Christ came in there fresh and died and rose again. The God Father rose him again from the third day. And the Bible says, if you believe it in your heart and if you confess it, you will be saved. Let it stone London, UK. That is how we get saved. It's not about your works, my dear friend. You see? Because the Bible says that is the word of faith that we proclaim. But you say, if, it's, if you must say yes, and you say yes, it is true, boldly enough, spiritually, audiorally, and you say yes. And when you say it, God says amen to it. And when you say amen to what God says, God says amen to what you say. And when you approve what God has said, God approves what you have said. By your words, my dear friends, you are justified. By your words, my dear friend, you will be condemned. You are condemned by your words. You are justified by your words. Not if, not but about it, my dear friend. So if we only we could understand this today, my dear friend, a little word that you see has power to do what to bless and also have power to do what to cause. You see, because what Peter is saying here, listen to what Peter says here in the book of First Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Bible says that what? Do not repay evil for evil or revival for revival, but on the contrary, bless for this is your call that you may obtain blessing. So now what he's saying here is this, that you, my dear friend, have to do what? To use your mouth. Use your mouth. Use your tongue to bless others with it. Do you get that, my dear friend? You can bless people with your mouth. Your words have a tremendous power to bless. No wonder the book of James chapter 8 verse, chapter 3 verse 8 says, but no woman can, listen to this, he said, but no woman being can time the tongue. It means that he cannot time your tongue. 
He said, but I can't sleep. Then why am I preaching about it if I can't turn my tongue? Look, my dear friend, I can't turn your tongue. You can't turn your tongue. Only person who can do it is God. God can turn your tongue. That is what Peter is saying. That is you, my dear friend, utterly what? Helpless apart from in God. The tongue. No man can turn the tongue. The Bible says it is less evil, full of deadly poison. That's your tongue. Do you notice that? The awesome power of your tongue. And then verse 9. He said, with, the, with, with it we bless our Lord and God, our Lord and Father. And with it we also do our cause people who are made in the likeness of God. Verse 10, he said, for the same month we come with blessing, cause what cursing as well. You see? And the Bible said, my, my brothers, these things ought not to be. So what the word of God is telling you today, let it stone. You have a mind to bless people. That's what you mean. That's why God gave you the tongue to bless people. Stop going around cursing people. Amen. Stop cursing people. Stop using all this 40 mouth. Stop using all this crazy word that you are using. You try to be mean or you try to look good to others. Stop doing it. Because the Bible said that you, my friend, have to give account on the day of judgment from every careless word, from every idle word that you have spoken, my dear friend. You see, that is what James is trying to teach us here. What he's saying here is it that you can bless people with your tongue or you can curse people with your tongue. Do you know that? That God has given you a power and authority. If you are a believer, if you give your heart to just Christ today, you have to do what? You have a power just as the same way a priest have a power to do what? To bless people. Have you ever thought that you have that power to bless people? And most of us never thought about it. That you have to do what? To be careful with your word. Do you know that? That you can bless people. You can also bless your children the way you talk to them. You can also do what? Cause them. By the way, let it stop. I come here today to bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I come here to bless your heart through the marvelous, through the victorious, through the powerful word of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, friend, it is not only your word and your thought, but also this is what's special. Amen. And that's what James was saying. He said, Listen, our tongues, we can bless. It means today, I can bless you in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Which already did. I can also do what? Bless you. You know what the Bible says, Pendition? I can say, You, my friend, you are blessed in Jesus Christ. Sister, you are blessed in Jesus Christ. Sir, you are blessed in Jesus Christ. The people are sitting over there eating, you are blessed in Jesus Christ. The people are watching life, you are blessed in Jesus Christ. And my brother sitting down there, you are blessed in Jesus Christ. There's a power that is in the world. There are some spoken power of word. Amen. That's what the Bible is saying here. So today, our world can bless. Our world also can cause. And here is an interesting scripture I want you to understand. In the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible says that therefore, holy brothers, you share in heavenly calling. Consider Jesus Christ the apostle and the high priest of our confession. So here, Jesus Christ is our high priest. My friend, do you know what high priests do? They bring things. The high priest bring things. Priests bring things to God. Amen. What did, what did they do? They bring things to God. But what did they bring? They bring the things that you bring to them, and rightly so, they give it to what? They give it to God. That's what the priest does. In the Old Testament, when the priest would do offer sacrifice, how did they get the sacrifice? The people have to bring the animals to do what to sacrifice because of their sins. And when the when the people bring the animal, the priest would do what? sacrifice that animal to the altar of God. You see, in the New Testament sense, who is our high priest? Is Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ offered to our Father, He bring what you give to Him. If you confess your sins today, my dear friend, Jesus Christ will take the sin that you've been confessing and give it to the God, the Father, and say, Father, I have forgiven him. Amen? The Bible says, without sharing of the blood, there's no remission of sins. So, if you don't offer Jesus Christ your confession, Jesus Christ has nothing to table to the God, the Father in heaven. The Bible says, Jesus Christ is at the right hand seat of God. It has seen for us, even as I'm preaching right now to you. Jesus Christ is it has seen for me. But if I don't come here to preach, it will not do that, my dear friend. So today, my dear friend, you table your sins, 
I don't care how bad your sins is. I don't care if you're a murderer. I don't care if you're a racist. I don't care if you're a rapist. I don't care if you're a homosexual. I don't care if you're a lesbian. I don't care any sin that you commit. Your sin remains in the past if you give your heart to Jesus Christ today. The Bible says if you confess your sins, Jesus Christ will forgive you. Jesus Christ will take your sins and give it to the God the Father and say, God the Father, I forgive him. I forgive her. Now our problem here is this, we are not confessing our sins. So if you haven't confessed your sins, you haven't given God anything to work on. You see? That's what the scripture says. It's very clear and very plain. And I want you to understand it. I mean, you also listen to this because why? We expect Jesus Christ to do what? To confess our sins. When we confess our sins to him, he will take our sins, give it to the God the Father. And the Bible says, God the Father will forgive us. Based on what Jesus Christ done at the cross of Calvary more than 2,000 years ago. Because he shared his blood for you. You see? So today, if you have nothing to offer to Jesus Christ, just can have nothing to do what to offer to the God the Father, except what we profess and what we confess. And therefore, the scripture makes it very clear for me and you to understand. Listen to this chapter, listen to this uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Just why he said this. He said, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my father, who is in heaven. That's what it, that's what it means, my dear friend. That it makes perfect sense. And that's why I'm telling you today, Jesus Christ is our high priest. And what does Jesus Christ offer to the Father is the only thing Jesus Christ can offer to the Father is what he offered to Jesus Christ. If he confesses your sin before men, if he confesses your sin before Jesus Christ and before men, Jesus Christ says, well, you will confess your sins before God the Father. But here is a warning verse. If you are not confessing your sin today, you see? Here is a warning verse in verse 33. Listen to it. He said, but whosoever denies me before men, I will also the world deny the person before my father who lives in heaven. And Jesus Christ is our high priest. He's presenting everything we present to him, to, our, to, to God the Father. He said, and that's what he said here. If you confess your sins to Jesus Christ, and you say, Jesus Christ, today, I have sinned against you. Jesus Christ will forgive your sins, and he will take your sins and say to God the Father, I'm offering my forgiveness on your behalf. On his behalf, you see, and we offer our sins to Jesus Christ, and just like offer our sins to God the Father, and the same way also we offer our praise to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ also take one, take our praise, and offer it to God the Father. As a matter of fact, the Bible said this in Book of Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. He said, "Through him, then, let us continue to offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lips of one that acknowledge His name." The only sacrifice that you can offer God to them, my dear friend, is not your money. It doesn't need your money. The Bible says God created everything with his word. Amen. Your high pay wages, God don't need it. Amen. Your cloth, God don't need it. Your house, God don't need it. Your car, God don't need it. God just needed it to do what? To offer your praise. When you wake up this morning, you say, thank you, Jesus, for making it possible for me to be alive. And I give you the glory. And when you say that, my dear friend, the Bible says, Jesus Christ will take it to do what? To offer it to God the Father. You see why that they, you see why today I'm telling you why we have you have three persons in one God. You have God the Father, you have God the Son, you have God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is living in me. Amen. And if God Jesus Christ who became a sacrificial lamb for me and for you, and then he will do what take that blood that he sacrificed across the Calvary. And that's why today, when you go to heaven, when you die, you know Jesus Christ, you go to heaven, you will see the same wound, the scars that will bear upon Jesus Christ upon this earth. He's still having it in heaven. Amen. And he will show it to the God. If I look at my hands, see what I have done to me. I forgive him. On his behalf. Because why he has confessed his sin. That's why confession is very important, my dear friend. You see? That's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ is our high priest. And the only sacrifice that he can offer to a high priest, my dear friend, is sacrifice of praise. The fruit of your lips. That's what the Bible says. You see? You see? The power of what a spoken word. And the Bible said this. If you love life, if you will see good days, be careful what you say. Because the Bible said, refrain your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking dissent. Because why every careless word that you spoke, my dear friend, the Bible said you give account to him. Whatever that you say, just Christ says, you will have it. Amen. Let it stone. It is very loud and clear. I'm just a Western Union boy saying the message. And the message today is better than clear. There are some power of spoken words. 
the power of word the man blessed in the mighty name of jesus jesus is lord hallelujah hallelujah amen and amen god bless you all if when i give your life to jesus christ i'll be here for another 10 minutes and you are welcome to come and confess your sins to jesus christ and i will lead you to our lord jesus christ the bible says if you confess he is faithful and just to forgive you from every unrighteousness in the first john chapter 1 verse 9 let them bless the mighty name of jesus jesus is lord